What's up guys welcome back to another episode of timber time outdoors i am dave if you are new to the channel welcome if you're a subscriber thanks for coming back in this video we're going to talk about this machine behind me we're going to talk about snowmobiles atvs and how to apply them um, to ice fishing and specifically kind of how to deck them out how to trick them out so that you are super efficient when you are ice fishing and you're not wasting any time and you can uh, extend your range out there. So stay with us, guys. Hey now, take a step outside and seize the day now. All right, let's get right to it, guys. Okay, so ATVs, snowmobiles, how to use them for ice fishing, how to trick them out. Um, this, let's talk a little bit about this machine behind me. So this is a used machine. Uh, this is a 2018 uh, Sportsman uh, 570 SP. And uh, just briefly, you know, I was looking for a snowmobile, looking for an ATV, both new and used. Um, it is the, you know, December 2022, super hard to get ATVs. And I actually wanted to get a Honda and I'll talk about that a little later, why I wanted a Honda. But uh, I couldn't find a Honda to save my life. And so I ended up with this little gem. This is a, a Polaris. And um, the reason I bought it is it's got super low miles. It was only used at a racetrack. Um, so the gentleman who had it, he used to go from his camper to his pits and back. And so it's never seen the mud and it was just too good a deal to pass up. And so um, I guess, you know, you can take the principles that we're gonna talk about in this video and apply them to any machine, any ATV, any UTV, and any snowmobile. And the reason I mention all those machines is, you know, you gotta kinda figure out what machine works for you, and that really depends on where you're gonna be fishing. So, you know, if you're on ice like this, where we got, you know, a little bit of snow, some ice showing, ATVs excel at this, right? You can just drive up and get right into your trailer. Um, you can use them in the summer. And so ATVs are a little bit more versatile. But snowmobiles, right, they excel on the snow. And if you want to go a long distance, um, snowmobiles might be the, the better option for you. But again, we're going to trick this thing out or talk about it, and you can apply that to, uh, to either machine. Okay, so what we're going to do from here is I'm going to take you off the stand, and we're going to walk around the machine. I'll talk to the camera from behind the camera and kind of point things out, and I will overlay the things that I'm talking about so that you can kind of understand the different concepts, okay? All right, we're gonna start in the front of the machine and um, we're gonna talk about some decisions here, okay? So there's lots of decisions as you, you know, look at gear and how you wanna outfit your machine. And I'm gonna point those out and give you some options as we go, okay? So this machine came with um, this bumper. Um, so your machine may or may not have that. You know, it is nice to have a bumper to attach things. I don't have anything attached to this. But um, the front of the machine here, I had to kind of figure out what's my strategy? How do I want to leverage the front of the machine? And um, let's just start with the auger, okay? So the auger, I, I ended up buying the, the digger. Um, there's other options out there. Um, I think the, uh, you know, what is it? The Jaws of Ice, um, it's another good one. It's like twice the money. I don't know if it's worth it or not. I, I kind of like the way this one is, it's solid aluminum. And uh, I just like how, it's got some uh, ways to attach like chainsaws and this kind of thing, but this is my auger. I, I use a simple auger. Um, I've got a, just a DeWalt drill that I put on it. 
Um, I think it's faster, it's my personal opinion, but there's all kinds of augers. But anyway, I wanted to keep my auger up front where I could see it. They're super uh, expensive and I didn't want it to get, you know, wrecked. I know there's ways to put them on the back. Otter makes a cool sleeve that you can uh, put your auger in. But anyway, I decided to, okay, let's get the auger up front. And then I had kind of some space here where I've got my rods. So, um, you know, rod storage is another decision. There's 8 million kinds of rod cases. And how are you going to do that? Uh, I can get four rods in this case and they work quite well. Um, I may end up getting two of these and kind of stacking them. I'm not sure yet, but, uh, but the, the, the decisions are, you know, where are you going to put your auger and how and you know rod case where are you going to put that and um, protect your rods you want them you know quick to access and uh, you want them to be protected so it's a pretty nice day out here today so not a big deal but a lot of times you're out here with some super bad weather all right so anyway that's how i did this i added this rack so i had something to attach this to and then of course we just bungee corded uh, the rods to that so so that's the front of my machine i know there's some boxes that you can get i may end up with a box at some point um, we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but this machine squats quite a bit um, and we'll, we'll get into that, but that may actually level this machine out if I can get some more weight on the front end. Uh, so, so that's the front rack. Oh, one, one more thing here that uh, is super important to have when you're ice fishing and you might ask yourself, how the hell are you going to use a winch? You're on the ice, there's nothing to attach it to. Um, there is a way and this is a get out of jail thing i'm going to talk about that um, there's a bunch of different ways where you can save yourself if you get stuck this is one of them you have a winch and you basically drill a hole and uh, you put this device down the hole and it pulls you out i'll talk about that i may do a separate video on that but get yourself a winch don't screw around winches are very useful year round so easy one okay next we're going to talk about the cockpit and there's a few things that i added here so I've got a phone holder and I've got a Hummingbird Helix 7. And uh, the decision there is, you know, basically you need to have a way to navigate, okay? So you're going to be coming off the ice at night. Um, you need to find your fishing spots. You can keep it simple. You can use a phone. You know, Navionics has a great app. You don't, you don't need to have a Helix. I just happen to have a Helix. And um, I've got the, you know, Lake Master chip in there just you know tells me exactly what the depth is so that's great just speeds things up is all um windshield is pretty critical you know you can get by without it you can use a helmet and really good gloves and heated grips and that kind of thing but i went with the windshield um kind of old school and just you know wanted to be as comfortable as i could so with the windshield um if you're going to add electronics you got to have a way to power these electronics okay so you know you can go right into the battery of the machine but that's risky um and risky because you can burn your battery down and not start and then you're stranded what i did polaris makes this nice little compartment i've just got a lithium battery in here and that lithium battery does nothing except power this unit right here so it's completely separate i can charge it up separate it's not going to affect my starting power so that's how i did that but the decisions are how are you going to navigate what electronics and how are you going to power those things okay next we're going to talk about storage 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 um, if you've got an a, a UTV, ATV, UTVs have a little more storage, but you know, storage is an absolute nightmare on these machines. There isn't much. Polaris has a little bit in the front, but you're going to have to add something, some kind of box on the back. You know, you can use a simple bin. Plano makes some cool bins. You can just bolt those right on, um, you know, leverage your rack in some fashion, but it, it is nice. Um, I bought the Otter box. This is a monster box. And it's specifically designed for ice fishing. It does a wonderful job. It's huge. I'm just going to walk you around the side here. It's got a you know an area on the top for things. I've got my my bait up here, chair, and there's uh, I think some tip ups in there. But you can kind of you know use your net, keep that stuff secure, and uh, we'll open up the box here and take a look inside. All right, guys, let's take a look inside the box. Oh, we better move the minnows. <laughs> minnows come out of there first okay look inside the box it's got a nice latch you can lock it um, so you open the box up here and you can see I already have it filled to the gills um, it's huge inside but uh, you know ice fishing you just require a lot of gear so I'm just gonna kind of briefly 
you know, walk you through what's in here and give you kind of a feel for how much stuff will fit in here. Um, one thing I will mention, and I'm going to get to that a little bit, you, you probably noticed that I'm not towing a sled. Um, there's a good reason why I don't tow a sled, and it's to protect this expensive equipment. If you're towing your sled across the lake, it's going to get a lot of vibration depending on where you're going and how bad the ice is. And these electronics are expensive, and I didn't want anything to, you know, get broken. Um, I've heard horror stories of, you know, the paint comes off your tackle, it's so bumpy. So I've got everything in the box that's important. There's a couple things in the sled, but again, I've got everything off the ice. It rides on the suspension of the machine. That is one thing actually nice about, it's kind of a double-edged sword, nice about the Polaris. It is like a pillow when it comes to a ride. But as you probably saw in the video, it squats a little bit, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's look inside the box here quick. All right, I'll just start pulling a few things out so you can see what's going on. Uh, I'm going to talk about this. This is my, my jumper. It's my get out of jail if I screw up my battery. Um, here is my, my drill. So we'll put that on the auger. I've got some tackle in here. Maybe not the best system as of right now. I probably need to do something better about that. Fish towel, more tackle. All right, oh, more fish towels. I've got a power box. So that fits in here um, pretty nicely. The way this box is uh, made, there's a weird hump in here. So it's kind of annoying on the inside, but I'll take you down here and see why that hump is there. That, that hump is to accommodate um, a back rail. So a lot of machines actually have a lip right there and a rail. So just be aware you'll lose a little space there, but my battery fits right in there. I've got a heater. So heater buddy fits just nicely. Um, the lid closes, so if you're wondering about that, that works really well. Uh, it's the cover for my hummingbird. Here he is my Vexlar. So, um, you know, you can never have enough ways to find fish. So that's my old Vexlar. That's actually like 20 years old. That unit is still awesome. Still works great. They still sell it. It's, it's really good. Um, I've got a camera. Here's my camera. Um, Markham camera. So again, want to protect that. And then here's my hummingbird. Uh, ice shuttle so I'll take I'll take that unit right there off and attach it here you know at some point maybe I'll have two and won't have to detach it but you, know, you kind of run out of money at some point it gets expensive um, back here I've got a so the lunch box and inside my lunch box isn't my lunch it is my batteries so not cold today I'm not gonna have an issue but if you get cold um, these batteries these batteries croak so I've got a, I'm going to try this, I don't know if it works, but uh, it's a little neoprene cover, it's maybe give it a little more life. But I always have to bring my batteries, drill my holes, bring my batteries and get them out of the wind. And then lastly, this is just a real small, nice little tackle box. So yeah, it's, uh, I got a couple, it's chains, uh, I'll talk about that device here in just a sec. So, um, nice box, really like it, it was not cheap. I think it was all $400, but uh, you know, now it's there and it, it's just built for this kind of thing and does a really good job. Okay, I talked a little bit about the winch. This, I wanted to talk about it. This is the Arctic Anchor. You can see that there. Um, I'll do a separate video on this and there are videos out there. So this is that device that you put down the hole. So this aluminum rod goes down the hole and then you've got a strap to winch yourself out. Uh, I hope I never have to use it. Um, it's kind of that get out of jail thing. So I've got redundancy. I don't ever want to be stranded. All right, at the start of this video, I talked about, um, you know, snowmobile versus ATV. ATVs can get stuck. Um, good tires make a difference. These are probably not so great. That's a stock tire, comes on it. Maybe not the best winter tread, but I've got a set of chains here. And I, just for the rear, um, I probably am going to get some chains for the front. I don't have them on. I don't need them right now. And, uh, you know, they're going to be a pain in the neck going in my trailer. So I'll probably take them on and off. But chains will uh, give you a tons of traction, deeper snow. Um, there's lots of videos on chains. But you need to think about traction. If you're thinking about an uh, ATV, you know, there's a good chance you're going to get stuck at some point. So you need to have the winch and you need to have chains and you need to have really good tires. Eventually I'll get better tires. And of course the ultimate solution, which some people argue isn't, but 
tracks, right? You can put tracks on these things. They're more, they cost more than the darn machines do, but you know, tracks will go through anything, but I've heard there's kind of a trade-off that they sort of beat up your machine. Um, so anyway, I went with chains. So that's my, my plan. Chains, if I get stuck, I will use the winch. Oh. All right, towing versus no towing. First thing, you can really only do this if you use a one-man shack. Anything bigger than that, you know, two-man and three-man, they're just, they're too big to get, you know, it's just too much weight. Um, you can see a machine squatting with just what I have here. It's about 100 pounds hanging off the back. Um, but if you like a one-man, this is the way to go, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, if you're going to tow, just, you know, think about that. You're going to have a hitch and so forth. It just is what it is. But I want to show you my system, how I got everything off the ice, and what I do with my sled. So let's let's take the sled off, and I'll flip it up, and uh, you can see how easy it is. I have a, a semi-custom-made hitch hauler. I'll talk about that here. So let's uh, let's undo it and take it off and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I, I made this hitch hauler so that it's kind of nested in here. And I'll show you some, some features of it. But essentially all I have to do is lift up. And slide it off. So... This is um, a really inexpensive hitch hauler from Harbor Freight. I think it was $60. And uh, I did have to buy an adapter because Polaris only uses the inch and a quarter receiver hitch. So there is an adapter here. Um, and then what I did is I assembled it backwards. So this rail right here is supposed to be right here. So I just, you know, it comes in a box with bolts and so forth and you have to put it together. So I just, I put the right on the left and the left on the right. And so the rail is actually back towards the ATV. And then this part is custom. So I went to a local big box store. I bought some um, three quarter inch steel and basically just bolted it together. If you're a welder, you can save yourself some time and weld it together. But I just drilled holes, use stainless steel hardware. And uh, this lip right here is actually super helpful because it picks up on the sled grooves and so you know, it's pretty self-contained. Um, so far, so good. It works really well. It gets everything off, up off the ice. Okay, let's just talk about the squat a little bit, right? So you got great big springs in the back. Polaris is ride like a pillow. That is a wonderful thing, but it's a really bad thing when it comes to when it comes to towing or putting anything on that hitch because it just it compresses that spring. It's got rear independent shocks. The wheels kind of do this. Yeah, it's just a low rider. It makes it hard to steer. It looks really funny. And then, of course, you don't have the ground clearance you're after. So on a Polaris and other machines, you can tighten the suspension, as I mentioned. Um, what I really wanted, I mentioned I wanted to try to buy a Honda for a couple reasons. You know, Hondas are bulletproof, and I don't care to go fast. I just wanted a machine that would get me on the ice and off the ice safely every time. I couldn't find a Honda. Supply chain issues. But the one thing I like about the Honda Foreman um, not the Rubicon, but the Foreman has a, a solid rear axle. Probably, you guys probably already know this. But that's much better for putting a lot of weight on the back. It, doesn't, it can't squat because it doesn't have independent rear suspension. There is one shock and it'll squat a little, but it just does a much better job um, of containing that weight. So if you're going to tow for ice fishing or any other kind of towing, you know, think about the Honda Foreman. It's a trade-off, right? If you're going to trail ride, the Honda Foreman is maybe not the best. But it does work better for a scenario like this. But anyway, I've got the Polaris. I couldn't pass the deal. Um, so far, I'm happy. All right, so that's my ice machine. That's my build. Um, I have a lot of hours into this thing. So if you're going to do this, just allow for some time. I think I started doing this over a month ago. Um, got the ATV and started buying things and assembling. And there's a lot of custom work. It just takes a long time to get everything how you want it. So if you're planning something, allow a lot of time um, it takes that it takes time and like everything in life it costs a lot of money unfortunately so the UT ATVs are expensive and all this gear it does add up um, I have a little joke you know hunting and fishing and all your gear you know you can kind of do a little math equation about um, you know price per pound so my price per pound is really high right now so I gotta go go catch some fish and bring that down and uh, we'll keep track of it here but um, but anyway I'll wrap this video up thanks for watching guys hope you learned something um, love ATVs, they're super fun. We're gonna use this thing in the summertime. So anyway, 
uh, like, subscribe, send it to your friends, and remember everybody, keep it in the timber. Bye-bye.